I'm, I'm really pleased to welcome Maria Hassabi and Oshin Monahan to this series of conversations hosted by Museo Universitario del Chopo. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for, for joining me here for this, for this conversation today. Um, Maria, Maria is an artist and choreographer who works with live performance, installation, sculpture, photography and video. And her works have been presented worldwide in theatres, museums, galleries and public spaces. She has been creating live installations or durational works in galleries and museums since 2013. And Oshin Monahan is a dance artist, visual performer and creator working on stage and in galleries with numerous artists and is one of Maria's longstanding collaborators. They've worked together since 2014. Since 1980s, El Chopo has programmed experimental dance performance and theater and has been at the forefront of giving a new impulse to art that uses the body as a point of departure. I am enemy, which we've been And we are really happy to have two artists who work with the body, bringing their voices to the series. Live works have experienced ebbs and flows of popularity and programming in mainstream galleries over the last 60 years. And today we are increasingly seeing the presence of durational live situations in contemporary museums. But these works are still unusual or unexpected experiences for many gallery visitors. And I'd like to start uh, by inviting both of you to just tell us a little of your roots and how certain influences have brought you to where you are today as artists. I think I'm sure there's many things that I don't even know, but definitely going to CalArts has affected very much my work. You know, I think um, uh, the way that I question when, I, when I'm making work how I question things, it has to do with my education coming from there, from CalArts. And I went there pretty in a young age. I was 16 when I, my first year of college. So I think it was, you know, I was still a teenager basically. So it was pretty, I was quite young to take everything in and let it affect me. But then later on, things like Shelley Center teaching Alexander Technique since 92, for example. Um, Alexander Technique, the, even if I don't practice it, there's some principles from how many years I've done it with Shelley and some of the teachers then she introduced me, that as principles they enter, end up entering in my work, not only as technical aspects, but the philosophy behind it, you know, anticipate. Well, anticipate, which is one of the principles of Alexander Technique, I use it as this idea of when we, when we are holding a position, when we're being still, 
uh, we anticipate how to when we're gonna move to the next place, you know. Now, being Greek, I'm sure there's something there, but I haven't figured it out yet. And to Oshin, can you tell us a little about your your roots and and what's what's brought you to what you're doing today in your various guises? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I. I went to university in New York City and I've lived there now, uh, or lived there for 22 years. And I think uh, organically as well, in terms of just being, feeling very much a fringe of the dance world in New York specifically, not really fitting into a specific community really there, even though I was dancing in different areas of dance throughout the city. Um, I think my, my more interesting relationships came out of my friends who were who had studied fine art and were artists themselves whether it was sculpture or painting and um, the relationships of them in being inviting me as well to be a part of their collaborative shows and galleries throughout new york i think it was just yeah an organic progression of being a a performer and um somehow finding Marie and I finding each other, um, meeting through mutual friends, in fact, not even necessarily in the dance world either, which not um, at all. <laughs> is also, yeah, which was wonderful, you know, um, we met as people, you know, in a way, not as dancers, let's say. So um, there's something really beautiful about that in, in, for me. As you say, Maria, you're interested in, in the tension of people in your work and among other things, it's clear that your work is to do with a, a relationship, with relationship between uh, the performers and the, the audience or the spectators. Can you maybe tell us a little more about about that shift that your work made from from stage to to museum and gallery? Uh, I think it happened a bit organically in my case. Um, I think it had to do with the actual work that I was making that it was concerned with the idea of images and the works were quite sculpture, sculptures. And slowly through the work, I started getting some invitations and so forth and one led to the next basically. And then um, when the invitation came from, in the beginning when I was performing in gallery spaces, uh, I was just doing basically almost identical work with what I was doing in theaters. Uh, but through this experience, I was getting to know a little bit more of how the audience was behaving, how they were receiving the, my performance basically, and their attention, which was very important for me, the, the, as, because it's a big shift uh, between the attention of the audience in the theater and the attention of the audience in gallery spaces and so these are the things I started questioning more and um, when it, an invitation came to be part of the Venice Biennale to represent Cyprus and the as part of the Cyprus of the Lithuanian Pavilion in 2013 that's when I actually made the first work that was made for an exhibition space and is when I started calling my, these kind of works live installations they exist in a loop they're present during the opening hours of the exhibition. It made a shift, but I still make work for theater and I'm very interested still in theater. I'm, I'm interested in public space as well and I'm interested in exhibition spaces. So, and I like, my mind thinks in a way in all of these directions. It's just the work um, changes what I'm questioning each time. Yeah, and I think the work that was more centered around, let's say, my theater, my, my works that I created for theatrical spaces for many years, uh, they started being concerned with that, the actual elements that existed in the theater space and what makes this space, how it's made not only architecturally, also architecturally and the lighting fixtures and how the audience walks on stage, how they get out of stage, uh, in the space, I mean, not on stage. Um, 
uh, how the audience sits and how all of these things have been part of my work or have been part, you know, I've been zooming into this. That brings me on to another question. And I, I've been think I've been thinking as you're talking about one of your works, um, which is called Plastic. And you obviously need a lot of mental and physical control to perform something like that. It's like watching almost a, a moving meditation where what we're seeing, the action is is more than moving slowly. It's it's like a moment to moment awareness. Uh, it's like it's the con the continuousness of attention is is unflinching, and it's really like seeing the body thinking, working against gravity, softening, rolling, rotating, the muscles working, the organs are moving. So of course you're a da of course you're a dancer looking seeing it like that. <laughs> My question to Ashin would be, how aware of the audience are you when you're when you're performing this this kind of work? And how did so how aware are you of the of the visitors and how do their attentions affect affect what you're doing? It's a great question. And I think it's different for each performer. For myself, yeah, I because I we I, we talk about this a lot between the performers, a very intimate conversation as a performer between the performer, the live performer, the sculpture, the architecture, the cold floor, depending on where you're performing, if it's marble, if it's wood, if it's a staircase. Um, so all of those things inform you as a performer. So it also changes in terms of each venue where we are um, and that's the same as well with stage with lighting in, in the theater as well you know um, if there's a carpet if there's a carpet as well you know um, but for me I it is to borrow your phrase which is exactly right for me it is a moving meditation so if the choreography for me is four hours, I'm in that for four hours in a moving meditation with a mantra in mind. I'm always present, you know, there's always a sense of presence, which is why I love dance. I've always loved movement because it's the only thing in life that's made me feel present in my body, in being alive in that moment. Nothing else matters except what I'm doing right there. Um, and so for me, um, if, my, if, the, if there's a gaze in the choreography where I'm looking out and I catch the eye of an audience member, it's because that's part of the choreography for me. It's not that I'm looking to make a connection, but the connection is made regardless, just as if you walk into um, a train station and your relationship with the architecture of a train station, you know? Um, Sometimes you, you know, you're in conversation with um, a piece of architecture that you didn't even, you know, notice at first, but suddenly you're there, and yes, you're, you're two things in conversation. And for me, it's like this. So I'm there for four hours, um, and uh, I can perform for the architecture of the space. I can perform for one person. I can perform for 50 people. Um, but for me, it's, it's always been about the work and the moving meditation of four hours, you know, of being present, of just doing the work. Um, so I don't perform it any different than I would for one person, for 50 people, for the painting on the wall, for the statue, for the rug um, that holds me or, yeah. And I can say that that's very much for Regine and it's true what he said. Yeah, it's very He's... specific to me because it, it, we, we talk about this amongst the dead. Everyone has a different relationship to the performer and to being a performer within the, this work in particular as well, you know. Some people can find it lonely, some people can find it um, invigorating and um, yeah, it brings up a lot of things for people, you know. I want to um, I want to pick up on something that you said, Ashin, about uh, about being present, about being aware of yourself as a body in the space and your relationship, um, your equal relationship as you feel it to the other people there, the architecture, maybe other objects. I'd like to to quote Maria here. 
saying what happens in the shadows is as captivating and seductive as what happens in the spotlight. Maria, you talked before about, about wanting more time to see things uh, in performance, I suppose, but also perhaps in life in general to slow things down in order to see these subtleties. And I wondered if, if you could talk a little more about this, about your desire to reveal other velocities of seeing, of, of being and being seen. Who are you directing the question now? To Maria. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Well, I think the desire of wanting more time to be as a performer and also to offer the audience time to see what was on display uh, was the reason of me doing the work that I'm doing. That it was the initial uh, thinking behind when it all started, when these works started basically. Um, and that's how there was initially and still is a big love for images and the way that images can be so powerful and at the same time accessible and to create images in live performance, I, the way that I understood that I had to do it or that I figured out uh, was to create, to embody, let's say stillness, which of course stillness doesn't ever exist because there's always a breath, but to hold a position for a longer time. And this brought in also this idea of giving time to the dancer to embody each position to be there, to be within themselves, within this uh, physical place, but also understand the representation their bodies are producing at this given moment. And how the viewer can look at them. You know, and if you hold a position for a while, this is very known by now, but I still find it so interesting and it still intrigues me so much. Uh, the first time you look at it, let's say as a viewer, the first the initial look, uh, right away you criticize it or you receive it as one thing. And then if you hold this image for a while, it just changes and it keeps changing and it keeps changing. And, you know, I'm, I really like that. And also the idea that not only changes, the fact that the viewer has the chance to drift away and come back, I find that magical as well. Because in that moment of drifting, it means you're opening up. You might fall asleep as well, but if you don't end up falling asleep, it's, it opens you up. It opens up to more possibilities. You go into your own thinking, into your own space and place in your mind, in your heart, and then you receive information in a different way. And also um, with this idea of stillness and then slowness to go from one place to the other, it breaks the narrative. So, which I am also very interested in dance. So it's not really something it's not a narrative you're looking at, it's many images that, yeah, they might sum up to something, but that's your own story to receive in a way. So you're talking about demonstrating, you, you're, you want to demonstrate presence um, and invite the viewer to perhaps come into a different way of being themselves. It makes me think about the skill of, of listening and um, relating to, to oneself in a different way, but also to, to other people in a different way by, by extension. And with this, with this very careful tending to the kind of here and now of every experience, I wonder how, how might focusing or centering ourselves around, our, around being embodied, around our embodiment, how could this pave the way towards a radically different relationship with our communities and even like the larger body of, of the earth? Like how can we take... I think there's many different aspects to this. There's one thing that I think that beyond images, beyond everything, what you see when you're looking at these performers, including myself, but when you're looking at us perform, you see labor and you cannot deny that, yeah? And that is connected with dance. And you see labor, you see resilience, uh, you see devotion. I mean, I think these are very powerful uh, things, you know? And then at the same time, you have their time. Uh, people staying with something for a long time. And then when they move from the next place, from one place to the next, it's a very slow, attentive um, attention. 
uh, and it is sort of it is philosophical for me. It is an idea, even though yeah, people are saying now we've exp everybody has experienced in 2020 a slower rhythm. Uh, a slower rhythm, yes, with a lot of aggressiveness, maybe because things were not great. <laughs> um, and this, what we're doing in art, it is a construction. Yeah, it's not a mirror of life. It's an ideal maybe or it's but it's definitely a construction and taking somebody's time i don't do it in my personal life i walk in the street really fast i sometimes i eat standing i don't have time you know all of these things it's just it's a it's a place that yes giving time to things it is very important it's almost like a, a stance in general in life even if i cannot do it in my everyday life it, it brings up a lot of these ideals, right? Because it's like, there are many times, for example, being a body in a public space on the floor, which brings up a lot of things for people who then project that onto you. They say, oh, you're getting paid to do this. Um, uh, so there's value, right? There's value in like, what is the, what am I looking at? What is this, right? Or brings up like um, the, the, the image of a body on the floor so there's like a class thing, if it's homelessness, if it's uh, uh, the images that just come through people that maybe they're not even aware of it as well, you know, um, but it's still there because we all live in this global society, right? And it's also, there's this idea- So of as like, a performer, that's interesting. And there's also this idea in our culture, move faster to get there, to get where though. I've been thinking a lot about degrowth. I don't know if either of you are familiar with this. To me, it speaks about, it speaks a little bit towards that, like imagining different ways of being other than the capitalist system with this focus on persistent accumulation of stuff, um, a relationship to progress, a relationship to production. Mm. Yeah, when you bring up capitalism. And that all lives in us as well, you know, it's, yeah, it, it, it's a part of us as well, you know, even from our histories that we weren't even alive for, you know, there's empire behind a lot. I'm Irish and I'm British and I'm American. So there's culturally I'm one thing, but then I'm another thing because of empire and being a person of a country of resource for another country. I mean, it brings up that all lives inside us, whether, you know, we're also connected more than we understand, you know what I mean? So to our histories, to each other. So, I mean, that's, I mean, it feels so embodied when I, when Marie and I do the piece together as well, where it's just these two figures that are both very close and at sometimes far apart at the same time, even though we're so still very close um, and how the image is constantly shifting and changing. And so, as Maria said before, as a viewer, I think, you just constant all these things come up for you and then they leave and then they come up and then they go away and it becomes something else and it morphs into another thing and and I mean yeah as an audience member to go and see live art which is something so delicate and intimate which is isn't maybe it's virtuosic in a very different way than maybe going to see a circus performer or um, uh, a ballet. Or, act, or just dance the way that. Or just know. dance in general. Yeah, it's, 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 it's virtuous in a very different way, but just as virtuous, you know, when you, when you can see the sweat or the tears sometimes or the trembling, the effort, the labor put behind um, the choreography, the movement. Um, and so asking an audience member to sit with us for that, holding that, that, that presence for them and hoping that they feel that as well, I think is so anti-capitalism as well, you know what I mean? Which is a beautiful thing to me, it's gorgeous, you know, which I think is part of the beauty of specifically this work together that Marie and I have, you know, we, we do. I want to ask you- It's a bit of like being an activist in a way, you know, it's like, Sorry, I just interrupted you. There may be a little delay. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I like your passion. But it's like, it, so, <laughs> but it does, it feels a bit like, uh, but that's part of my history as well, you know? So, um, 
and something that I admire so much of, of Maria, it's part of her, you know, I, I find it's part of her as well. I, I, I you know, there's a, a thing I, I see in her that I see in myself, you know, um, from our own histories, from our relationship with, with dance, from our relationship with life in general. Um, yeah. Um, and yeah, I think you become a bit of an activist in a way, whether you realize it or not, you know, we, we are, we're all living in this world, right? We can't pretend that a lot of things aren't happening when they are, you know what I mean? It's like someone telling you the sky is purple, but you know the sky is blue and you keep saying, but the sky is blue, but they keep telling you the sky is purple, you know what I mean? Well, I think that all art artists are activists in one way or another, because apart from their actual artwork that they produce also is, uh, they always have to stand behind what they do and support what they do and really convince people to get money, to, you know, to exhibit mm. it, all of these things. Right. As, as we've mentioned, there is an increasing amount of programming of live and performance-based art in museums and galleries all over the world. As a dancer myself, someone who works in the realm of the physical, this expanding platform is an encouraging acknowledgement for prioritizing the immaterial, for prioritizing embodiment and human connection. And Maria, at the center of your works is the human being, the physical presence of someone with their gestures, their gaze, their thoughts, their feelings. And I feel your work is an invitation, and you said this before, it's an invitation to people but I feel like it's an invitation to see and be seen in a time of, of virtual worlds mm -hmm. like this, of distance, of division. And I'm thinking now about this sharp focus of living in this time disconnected from the physical presence of others. In the highest levels of lockdowns across the globe, people are told to isolate from each other as, as much as possible. And this pandemic has heightened the significance of physically being together. So your piece entitled Together, which was made obviously pre-pandemic in 2019, it, it speaks to the relational challenges of these times. And I'm curious to know, how do you both see that work now, um, which you've said is a study in how to be together and how to be together when everything is falling apart? Well, I think that it's two figures together two human beings, not a Greek woman, uh, not an Irish man, um, just two human beings moving in an intimate setting um, through a series of movements. Um, I think it speaks to connection, to holding space with one another, to the value of time time we give to each other um, and the practice in, in being present with one another. I think that that's, I mean, time is our, our, our biggest uh, uh, currency really in this life, you know? So, um, and even though time is a human constructed I idea, um, it does exist, right? I mean, we, we all have a limited run in this world. So I think for me, it brings up things of this, the intimacy of just two human beings um, embodying the presence of the now. For me, the work, um, it was actually made when I was pregnant and I made it with Oishin and Fistula, two of my closest collaborators that I love very much. So every moment I would go in the studio, it meant a lot to me. Uh, it was a very beautiful process. It was a very honest process. Um, and the work still for me has so much to do with care, uh, taking care of each other, taking care of oneself and the space around. And when I think about the work and the idea of together, it is about care more than anything. And how it makes me reflect to the now and what we're going through. Uh, it's again, for me, it is about care. Yeah, there is, I'm 
like everyone, people miss their families. They haven't seen their parents in many in a long time or friends and all of this. And through all the frustrations we're going on, I think there's um, the principle, let's say, of care is still really important. Yeah, and is caring about in every way, like even if you have COVID and you care, you take care of not giving it to other people, you know, like walking in the street and wearing your mask. So you not only protect yourself, but you protect the others. You know, it's kind of like mm. this back and forth. And so in this- Caring for one another, it's so intimate, you know, and the imagery is constantly shifting in it as well, you know, between the two of us. And it's not you know, only- so... and it, and it's not, not only it's not only about like oh I care about this person dancing with me. It's just the intention, the way that we're moving, that we're moving carefully. Mm -hmm. But it's not carefully like oh my god, I just, you know, you're taking care of yourself. How you're gonna move with the other person to mm -hmm. create images, to create stories, to create you know. I mean the hours that Maria takes to create the choreography, and then the hours it takes within the rehearsal process between the two of us. I mean. It's so detailed and so so the intimacy is so layered in it, you know. Yeah. And I think that is very timely for, for what we're living through right now. Yeah. I wonder if you could tell us about your experiences working as performers, specifically in, in museums and galleries, where you are in different proximities to, to visitors. Um, it's not the same as stage space. You're often on the floor, as Ashin mentioned and in these unexpected and in-between spaces, what is, it, what is it like, that experience, to, to do this work? What is it like to do this work? How do you relate to people both during and after your shift? Well, like we said before, I think this work in particular can bring up a lot of different things for different people, you know. But the relationship as a performer um, it's a very intimate relationship with the work in general. Um, I mean, it's a complete embodiment of it. Um, you have to, I mean, there's, you can't lie. It's just, it's, you have to be in the work. You have to be completely committed to it. Um, especially in a setting like a public space, like a museum where people can be this close to you and, and they, and they sometimes are, you know, with, taking um, video or, or photographs, you know, um, it can be complicated sometimes. Sometimes you have, um, most of the time, I'd say, you have very respectful viewers and people that are um, respectful of you as a human body in a public space um, uh, performing. Um, they may not always get it, and it's not really about that anyway, to be fair. Um, but there are sometimes you get uh, viewers that cross a boundary. Um, you know, uh, there has been a moment, for example, I'll never forget it, where I was on the stairs performing something and I am in this very vulnerable moment where I'm moving slowly. <laughs> um, and I'm, uh, you know, my, my chest is kind, I'm in this very precarious position and I hear, footsteps running up the stairs and suddenly a, a man of you know jumps leaps across me and it was frightening because I mean when you're on stage you don't something like that would never really happen right um ra rarely would something like that happen um and rarely do these things happen but when they do happen you really feel how exposed or just how um, um, vulnerable in a way you are in that moment being a, a human being moving in a public space you're not a you're not a piece of sculpture so if somebody talks about you you hear it you know uh, if somebody's this close with the camera you feel it you know um, and so again it's finding that that's that, that, that meditation in the work that always brings you back and keeps you grounded and keeps you able to stay with the work, you know? Um, but so the, the relationship can be complicated, you know? It's, 
always mostly very beautiful actually it's of course you know if it was terrible you know it would be hard to continue to do it <laughs> but mostly it's beautiful um you get people who just will 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 come up close to you and say thank you you know and that's always very touching maria same question to you <laughs> well, well i wanted to, to talk first also because for me it's a bit different um is it different when I when I first open a show? I'm more similar with uh, Oishin, let's say, and the other performers. Uh, maybe not right in the opening. Basically, my mind is is in and out. Yeah, I'm also thinking of like I give notes to people as well. You know, so while I'm performing, I'm also looking at other at everyone else. Uh, I'm concerned. You know, like why is the institution allowing photographers to come so close to us and I go in afterwards and talk to the to the curator or director or whatever and try to solve problems so there's a moment there's all of these things involved uh, and there's a time while these are more taken care of let's say in, in the run especially if the run is five weeks or six, six weeks long in, a, in an exhibition that these things are more settled and taking care of that then I can enter and be really a performer in the work. But it takes it takes a while because you know it goes back and forth. And my one I, there's so many uh, what I love performing in exhibition spaces the most is that I don't when I'm performing in a in a, in the theater I'm so nervous all day all day long until I get to the theater until the audience walks in until you know the first and somehow, because the work is so slow, the nerves never end up leaving your body. The adrenaline never leaves your body, stays there for the whole 70 minutes of the work. So you're like wiped yeah. out. Somehow, uh, doesn't mean I don't enjoy it, but it's so intense in the theater. In the museum, somehow, you know, you wake up in the morning, you have your breakfast, you know, whatever it is, you take your shower, you go to the museum, you don't even have time to warm up, you start performing at 10 a.m you don't even have time to be nervous, you start, you know, and something about that, I like it, it's just so much part of life, of just something you do every day, you know, something that happens in exhibition spaces is that, you know, you, you're so much into the task, and with my work, we always, we're always counting everything, all the poses, um, and you're like, wow, this person has been there watching this whole for like the last hour. And then all of a sudden, okay, the choreography allows you to turn your head over there and you realize there's been no one there, you know? And, and it was just your hair hanging and you thought it was a human being, you know? So there is a lot of, I don't know if you have the same work, the same, you know, Lizzie, when you do these works as well, but at least with my work, we keep talking about this, like if there's some, you know. Maria, you work in a range of, visual and multi-dimensional media why is it why is it also important to you to use the body in life performance as a medium well I, my the body is the departure of all the works that i'm doing not only because it's my education mm -hmm. and it's uh, dance is the history let's say as art history that i know the most and i've worked through let's say but also it is my inspiration it is my tool it is my pen and brush so even, even when I do photography or video, it's always a departure from the live performances that I've worked with uh, on the body in space and time. Even if afterwards the photography takes away time, you know, or the video end up manipulating the time even more in ways that I cannot manipulate it in real, in realness, basically. And the sculptures that I've, that I've made in the past, they're all related to live performance as well. They're lights, um, they're a doll, in, a doll, a human figure doll, basically, out of the dancer. Uh, so yeah, it's very much, it's all about that. So I'd like to dive a little deeper into this topic of, of human beings as subjects, as the body, as material, as people, as, as living archives of works. And, and often these people are dancers. Am I right in thinking that all the performers you use are, are trained dancers? Not everyone. In the past, there's been people that have not been trained dancers, but they, they, are, um, they love it. 
So, so apart from being a dancer yourself, why is it important for you to work with dancers? What do they bring to the production and execution of your of your works? I don't think it's possible anymore. The work has, unless there is some works that you can do it if you're not a dancer, but most of the works that I'm, I'm developing, even the one that I'm developing now is the detail. It might look so easy for somebody, but the detail that it takes to be it, <laughs> to become it, to find it, uh, you need to be very trained. You have to be a person with a lot of experience with your body. And it doesn't mean, even if you've taken ballet for 30 years, it doesn't mean that you're the kind of person that can do the work. Because we've done that too. And it doesn't, it's not. It's actually, it takes desire to be able to do this work. It takes somebody who is into it. <laughs> So maybe even if they're not super trained, but they're into it, they can find it. But it's better for them as well, so they can avoid injuries and all of these things that they're trained as well. Have either of you been making or performing during the pandemic? And if so, what has that experience been like? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I was making work for a long time myself in New York and it was a conscious decision to stop actually and perform for other people. I was curious to be in other people's work to just be not just be a performer but to just embody other people's uh language their way of moving um and the pandemic um i thought you know it, it i had to yeah i had to rely on my own body my because it was uh, social distancing right it was isolation then making a lot of uh sort of uh, video diaries with my body uh, during the pandemic. Um, I mean, nothing uh, crazy, but, you know, f sharing it on my, my Instagram stories or something like this, you know, um, which has become, I think, a place for performers to have an outlet, you know, uh, uh, to, to be seen, you know, um, to have a place to create um, and, um, yeah, and, uh, and actually working with another, uh, dancer, um, remotely on a, on a, a duet, a project as well. So, um, it, weirdly enough, kind of staying busy in a way. Yeah. So Maria, same to you. Have, have you been making or performing during the pandemic? And I have not performed since uh, January last year when we did together with Oshin and then uh, in Berlin and then um, we were in rehearsal in February with everyone for the project that was supposed to happen in April and um, after that right after that the, basically the lockdown started and then since September I started working on a new solo um, which is funny, once I started working on the new solo, I was like, okay, let's just make something else that I'll never remember again. And once it's time to perform it, I'll have to spend like three months remembering it, which is, you know, you know how it is with dance. It's like you make something, but it's not like we made a painting that is there and you can say, look mm -hmm. what I made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made this solo and now may I, I'm almost done with another solo. It's almost like making air, even though it's not because mm. you do gr you do grow. You do grow, you do think. Mm. It keeps me alive, it keeps me busy in my mind, it keeps me busy in my body and as a person in the world because I keep thinking about, oh, why this, why that, blah, 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 which is the most interesting to me, I think. Any final thoughts on, on what, it, what it means to be doing what you both do, what we all do, the three of us, um, in, this, in this time of such of such change, of such a shift in the epoch almost. This is terrible what I'm going to say, but I really think that dance is irrelevant and it's going to continue being irrelevant. <laughs> I think it's relevant to some people. <laughs> I love it, so I have to continue doing it. Uh, I find performance very powerful and, and walking in a space and seeing people doing, you know, what they do through performance, even if it's something that I don't even like aesthetically, I usually is the most powerful thing for me because it's real, it's live, it's alive. Uh, it's not, it's edited in front of me. 
all of these things. I find it so valuable. I just, you know, seeing how the world is, is like now even more than any, than even before, everyone is more addicted to TV. I don't know if there's mm. any, t- it's gonna be any time, if there's gonna be more space for us, for what we do, you know? Who's gonna have the patience to, to watch us anymore? <laughs> when all you want to do is press next for the next tv series you know but it doesn't that's matter funny. it's there is resilience in what we do and i think that's what's important we just have to keep doing it yeah that's why we're here giving a voice mm-hmm. to right. the marginal to people that, that believe in in these things for she and any thoughts I agree with Maria, actually, but I also think the pandemic in a way has solidified my value in in being a performer, actually, and feeling the value of, of, of dedicating my life to being a mover, to exploring this body, bodies together, apart, whatever, remotely. In a, in, a, in a space, um, in some ways, it's made me realize for me, I know that the world sees it differently and the value of being a dancer, whatever that means to them, you know. Um, as a performer, I feel that there's a, I feel um, maybe a bit more responsibility if that's possible uh, as a activist as we've talked about as a just a human being with my experience my histories that live in my body my traumas my joys um, all that get expressed through my work um, with myself with others I'm more interested about bodies and space and and value and effort and um and yeah, uh, and value than I've ever been maybe before. Yeah. What about you? Because I've really had to have. Yeah, I I can identify some of with with some of what Oshin says. It this living through this last year has has definitely solidified and and affirmed my my interest and my my dedication to physical practices to working with my body to being interested in the relationship between human beings and to be honest it it does feel pretty radical in a in a world that feels like every every day it becomes more and more in embedded in capitalism because you do have to be dedicated you have to keep concentrating on practicing taking care of your body working on practices of attention, of being present, of kinesthetic awareness, Um, you know, that's, that's work. And I, yeah, I would say that I feel that I feel even more, uh, I feel quite aggressive, aggressively Mm -hmm. for it. It's really doing that so that, so that we relate to each other in a, in a present way, in a way of listening, in a way of, of being here as a, as a human being, of showing up. Um, and being present um so yeah and also keep introducing that to the world that how it might feel to be in your body in the moment i think that's a great place to finish thank you so much for taking the time to to meet with me and have this conversation today thank you to maria thanks Oshin, and thank thanks, you, to every- thanks to everyone at Mozilla Choppo. thanks to thank you so much Jose Luis Paredes Pacho, and take good care, everyone. You too. Thank Thanks. you all.